In this video, we're talking about how to find horizontal asymptotes for rational functions. Remember that a rational function is just a fraction. So here, in this particular problem, we have f of x, g of x, and h of x, which are all rational functions because they're all fractions. And we need to find any horizontal asymptotes for each function. So we'll start with f of x here. And what we notice is that we have x squared plus x plus 1 in the numerator, 3x squared plus 7 in the denominator. Now, whenever you're looking for horizontal asymptotes, the only thing that's going to matter is the term with the highest degree in the numerator and the term with the highest degree in the denominator. So for example here, take the numerator. We have x squared. Here we have x to the first power. And then we have a constant, which is really an x to the 0 term, because x to the 0 is 1. 1 times any constant is just the value of that constant. So this is an x to the 0, an x to the 1, and an x to the 2 term. So the x to the 2 term is the highest degree term. Same thing here in the denominator. We have 3x squared and a 7. The x squared term is a higher degree term than the constant. So we only want to look at the highest degree terms. And that's going to be the case for every rational function. So let's just go ahead and circle those. So here we have an x squared. And here we have a 3x squared. Keep in mind that the highest degree term is not always going to be the first term in the numerator or the denominator. For example, here in g of x, the highest degree term just happens to be the last term in the numerator just because of the way that they wrote the order of the terms. So that's the highest degree term there because it's higher than x squared or the constant. x to the fourth is the highest degree term in the denominator. And looking at h of x here, we see that the highest degree term in the numerator is x cubed. The highest degree term in the denominator is x squared. So we want to go ahead and circle all of those. Make sure that you include a negative sign if there is one. So for example, here in the denominator, if we had had 1 minus x squared, we would have wanted to grab that negative sign inside of our circle here, because sometimes the sign is going to end up being important. So we're only interested in the highest degree terms and their signs. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ratio of those highest degree terms. So here, f of x, we don't care about anything but the highest degree terms. So we can almost just rewrite this as x squared over 3x squared, not for the purposes of simplifying the function. Obviously, these functions are not the same. But for the purpose of finding a horizontal asymptote, we're only interested in these highest degree terms. So we just look at these highest degree terms. And then what do we notice about this? Well, we've got an x squared in the numerator and an x squared in the denominator. We can cancel those out. And what we're left with then is just 1 divided by 3. This ratio then, 1 divided by 3, and the line y equals 1 third is going to be the horizontal asymptote for the function. What we take away from this then is that when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, here we had x squared and x squared. So we'll say when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is just the ratio of their coefficients. So the coefficient on this x squared was 1. The coefficient on this x squared was 3. So we get 1 third. And so we end up with y equals 1 third, just the ratio of the coefficients. What about g of x here? If we just rewrite this as 4x cubed over x to the fourth because those are the only terms we care about, what we notice here is that we'll get x to the third to cancel. We'll take out an x to the third from the denominator, and we're just going to be left with x to the first in the denominator. So what this simplifies to is 4 over x. Now keep in mind that horizontal asymptotes are all about end behavior. They're all about the behavior of the function as x gets very, very, very large over toward positive infinity, or as x gets very, very, very small over toward negative infinity. So if we look at this 4 over x value, if we were to plug in an extremely large number, something close to positive infinity, or if we were to plug in something extremely small, close to negative infinity here for x, we would get 4 divided by an extremely large number. And the value of this fraction would go to 0, because the larger we make this value of x, the smaller the value of the whole fraction becomes. And it gets closer and closer and closer to 0. So what we can say is that if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, here we had x cubed in the numerator, x to the fourth in the denominator. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Then the horizontal asymptote is going to be the line y equals 0, always. 
And here we just had one degree difference. We had x cubed and x to the fourth. They were only different by one degree. But this rule is gonna hold true no matter what the difference is in degrees. So for example, if we had had x cubed in the numerator and x to the seventh in the denominator, we would have had a four degree difference. We would have ended up with four divided by x to the fourth. But it would still be the same because even if we had x to the fourth power here in the denominator, if we make x very large, close to positive infinity, or if we make x very small, close to negative infinity, the denominator is still gonna be much, much larger than the constant in the numerator and so the horizontal asymptote for the function is going to be y equals zero. So again, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is always y equals zero. What about this last function here, h of x? Well, we pulled out x to the third and x squared. So if we simplify, we have x to the third over x squared. We'll cancel the x squared from the denominator and two factors of x from the numerator, which will just leave us with x or the line y equals x. Well, the line y equals x is not horizontal. It's the slanted line that runs through the origin. So what this tells us is that if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. And again, here we had one degree difference. We had x cubed in the numerator, x squared in the denominator. So we had three and two, they were only off by one degree, but we'll still have the same result if the degrees differ by more than one. So for example, if we had x to the seventh in the numerator and x squared in the denominator, we'd be off by five degrees. We would have ended up with x to the fifth but of course, you know that y equals x to the fifth is not a horizontal line. It's a function with curve to it. So what that reinforces is just the point that if the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, there's no horizontal asymptote. In fact, what we do have in this case where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator is a slant asymptote if the degree of the numerator is exactly one greater than the degree of the denominator. So if they're off by one degree and the numerator is greater than the denominator, like in this case, we ended up with y is equal to x. That's going to be the equation of our slant asymptote or oblique asymptote. But just to summarize, what we have to remember here is that when we have a rational function like any of these three, we just grab the highest degree term from both the numerator and the denominator and separate them into their own fraction. We ignore everything else. Then we cancel whatever we can, and what emerges are these three rules. So if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the coefficients of those highest degree terms. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is always the line y equals zero. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote for the rational function. But if the degree of the numerator is exactly one greater than the degree of the denominator, then the line that results is in fact a slant or oblique asymptote.